There's a lot of reasons why games just become unreleased. Sometimes like the budget runs out, sometimes the company folds, sometimes they get to a certain point where it's like, ah, you know what, let's scrap it and move on to something else. Where there were a lot of games that were slated to come out for the Super Nintendo that we never got. And in this video, we're gonna look at a lot of Super Nintendo games that just never came out. Like Batman from Software Creations, which you might know them as the people who did the Spider-Man and X-Men game. Now you can see what's going on here. I mean, this is not your movie Batman. This is like Batman based on the comics here and big graphics and everything like that. You know, nice kind of side-scrolling beat-em-up game. Again, this is a prototype version of the game, so it's definitely not completed. But you get a nice look. You get a nice feel and see of what's going on with a game like this. We could have had this game. It never came out, though. And along with that, Sunsoft was going to release Batman Revenge of the Joker also on the Super Nintendo. Now, we did get this on the NES, but there was also slated to be a Super Nintendo version of it, which would have been very, very cool. I just, I love how this game looks. I love how this game specifically looks and feels, but again, just a game that we never quite got, which is too bad. I, I would have, I would have played this one for sure. I like the suit. I like the NES one too, but yeah, this one would have been great too. A game from Atlas that we never got. Well, Metal Jack is a very anime-looking game here. Maybe it was based on an anime that I didn't know about. I'm not sure. I've done zero research as always, <laughs> but this is very, very cool. I would have loved a game like this. I would have loved this. A uh, nice anime style. You know, you can choose your characters and, you know, go on from there. Yeah, I love it. I think it's kind of weird that you actually have like sword swipe uh, limitations here. You can only use it so many times, but you know, I guess if you can always use it, then you know, then what's the point? You're going to have to help me with this. This is Bobby's World. Bobby's World, uh, based on a Saturday morning cartoon from uh, Howie Mandel. I could swear that I saw this on my rental shelf at my local video store. I mean, even before I knew this was a prototype, even before I knew like this was a Super Nintendo anything, where it's like, wait, it never came out? I could swear it's Mandel effect, I don't know what it is. But I swore I saw this on the rental shelf, even thinking back then, before I even knew it was a prototype, again, like looking in retrospect, I was like, oh yeah, they had a Bobby's World game, but I, I never rented it. Did they have it in magazines? Maybe they did, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it never never officially came out, never officially came out. I could swear it did though. I could swear I saw it for, for rent and I never rented it because I, why, you know, why would I? I didn't care. Oh, this is gonna bug me for the rest of my life. This and Star Ocean. Star Ocean was another one. <laughs> <laughs> that I remember literally seeing on the store shelf. Maybe it was a dream, I don't know. The Shadow would have been a very cool Super Nintendo game to the point where they at least had a poster available. I forgot what game I had, but I had uh, the Shadow poster representing the Super Nintendo game like it was one of those, you know, you, you buy the game, it was like, you know, like Phalanx or whatever the game was, I don't remember. Um, but it's like, you know, Phalanx on one side and then it was the Shadow on the other side. It's like, oh, the Shadow's coming soon for Super Nintendo. Well, it never came out officially, uh, but, you know, what was going to be the Shadow game would have been a very cool game. It was just going to be another side-scrolling beat-em-up, which I loved. And you can see it's not all the way completed. <laughs> You're going to get that a little bit with a lot of these, uh, with these prototypes, but you know. See, even I'm learning with doing my own videos. I did not know that they were making a Super Baseball Simulator 1002, a sequel to easily the best baseball game of all time, in my opinion. The cool thing with these, uh, the baseball simulator games is they play like a decent baseball game. The baseball games are usually generally pretty fun. But when you add that extra element of you can have like a super crazy uh, batting technique or pitching technique, it just makes it more off the wall, makes it way better, just makes it more fun. Yeah, we could have had a Super Baseball Simulator 1002, and I suppose we could I, We could always put it back on a flashcard or a repro or something like that, but yeah, it would have been cool to see this at the, on, the, on the shelf. Remember that VHS game, Nightmare? Well, this is Atmosphere. Think you can win? I think not. And this is that. It's that, but as a platformer, in a way. Um, it came from the time when they put, like, random typical boys in weird worlds. You know what I mean? This is like the, like, oh, like, you can see yourself as that character. You can see yourself as that boy. But there was a few games that were like that, weren't there? There was a few games where they were like, hey, we're just gonna, you know, have the you know, typical person in a fantasy world, and that way you can pretend that that's you playing in this game. It wasn't necessary. The game itself could have been cool, could have been cool, but you know, uh, they made a Congo game, or they were, I, I say made, they were going to make a game based on Congo. And for some reason, Congo got all the publicity when the movie came out. Like there was like, I don't know if it was just like overly advertised or something, but there's a lot of people talking about this 
movie about Congo. And it's like, okay, that's that's fine. Uh, what looks like static on the screen, this is actually part of the in-game. It's, it's not my capturing footage. This is actual the in-game, what the game looks like when you're playing this at first. Um, different kinds of gameplay styles in this game. It could have been cool. I could have seen this being a thing. Urit? Urit? How do you pronounce this? Uh, how do you pronounce it? It's kind of like a futuristic sport or a game of tag or something where you have to, like, capture the flags and, uh, you know, don't suck. <laughs> I don't know. This is the first time I've literally ever seen this game as I'm capturing my own footage, but uh, sure. I mean, this this could have been fun, especially multiplayer. Steven Seagal is the final option. Yeah, they were going to make a game with digitized Steven Seagal in the game, playing as Steven Seagal. And if you're only familiar with Steven Seagal by today's standards, you have no idea how much of a badass he was in the early 90s. Um, as far as his movies go, a lot of people loved his movies. Uh, just that was the kind of thing. That was the thing along those lines like with the Jean-Claude Van Damme and stuff like that too. Steven Seagal, man, he was the it factor. And he was gonna have his own uh, Super Nintendo game. That would have been interesting. Lobo could have been a very cool game. Lobo could have been a very, very cool. It looks a lot like a what's that fighter from Rare. You know what I mean? Killer Instinct. There you go. Is that right? Uh, it could have been another one of those games. Yeah, fine. Okay, we'll take it. This game is gonna be called Prime. Is it based on a comic that I'm not familiar with? I mean, it looks like it could be, you know? Like maybe like from like, is it like one of those like Dark Horse or one of those other kind of indie published? I don't know. Could have been a fun uh, beat em up game. And. This was pretty fun. There's a game called Shadowhawk, and Shadowhawk looks like it could have also could have been a very cool kind of comic book style uh, uh, beat 'em up, or you know, just a comic book style game where you just you know go through and beat up the enemies and move on from there, and you have your grappling hook and everything, and that's how you're defeating these enemies. This game feels like it could have been Spider-Man. This game feels like it could have been one of those games where, like, hey, we made a Spider-Man game, and then this, and then Marvel says, oh, no thanks, we don't want this uh, as a video game. And that's when they say, okay, well, if it's not going to be Spider-Man, then we're just going to change the character and give him a grappling hook instead of a web. You know, it feels like one of those kind of games. I don't know. If, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly could have been. I don't know. This would have been a great game. I, w I would have loved to have seen this. Here's a game called Spellcraft. This game looks pretty cool. Unless it's tile screen alone here. Oh, it's one of these kind of games. Uh, but then it plays like this. This game looks and feels to me like a uh, The Immortal. Remember that game, The Immortal? I mean, to the point where it has the kind of same style, same kind of, gra in a way, same style and graphics and everything. And then when you go into a fight scene for sure, it's definitely like the immortal. Like this game is this this could have been a thing, but it wasn't. We can look at a few Genesis games that never came out for Super Nintendo, including Arcus Spirits. Now this is the Super Nintendo version. This is the prototype that we never got. However, there is a few of these games that did come out for the Sega Genesis, and this one is one of the better ones too. If this game would have come out for Super Nintendo, it would have been one of my favorites. Now it came out for Sega Genesis, which on the Sega Genesis, for some reason, I never got around to playing. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least uh, you know, early in my Sega Genesis lifespan, anyway. Um, but what a fun game! This would have been a, this would have made a great Super Nintendo game. I'm sorry it didn't come out. Same with uh, the uh, Global Gladiators here. Global Gladiators. <laughs> yeah, that was another game that was slated to be a Super Nintendo release, never came out. But we did see it on the Sega Genesis, so not so bad. Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. It has the Johnny Weissmuller Tarzan call, which is copyright, so I can't play it, but you could probably look it up yourself or whatever. We could have had a Tarzan game. This one looks very early in development. Um, yeah, it just would have would have been kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. You know, Tarzan, I think, is one of those public domain things, so anybody can do a Tarzan anything they want. Maybe I'll make a Tarzan video game. We'll see. Ooh, a Mickey game. Mickey's Playtown Adventure, A Day of Discovery. Well, I do like the Mickey Mouse games, but I have a feeling this game is made for kids. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, bear with me. This might take a while. <laughs> okay, 8+. plus, Perfect. Uh, yeah, this is, this is definitely a Mickey Mouse game made for, uh, made for kids. So, never got it. It's all good. Hey, what about a Barbie game that we never got? Well, it's funny because, you know, Barbie going on vacation here and one of the locations is Wyoming. <laughs> I used to live in Wyoming. I lived in Casper for six months. Uh, dress yourself up to whatever you're doing here and build a tent. All right, so you got to help uh, Barbie uh, pitch a tent here. There's a joke in there somewhere. Uh, very cool. All right, yeah, it's just more just interacting, you know, Barbie's a setting and then you different things have different uh, goals. A while back, I also covered a bunch of NES games that we never got. Some great NES games that just never came out. Just like there was a lot of great Super Nintendo games that quite never came out. And maybe we'll talk about the Genesis games that never came out. That's coming up soon.